Hey guys, this is Reverend Sean with the Center Path, and we're going to go over more of our cheat sheets. Okay, we're going to maybe redo some of the stuff as well. We're going over the four Brahma Viharas. So if you want to learn more about that, the different four things that we're going to concentrate on in the practice of our Buddhist practice, um, stick with me, and I'm going to show you some challenge things too that you can try. Now. The best way to approach your practice in daily life is with the four Brahma Viharas. People keep wanting to know, what do I do to become a Buddhist? What do I do to start the practice? How do I begin practice in this thing? Now, there's there's lots of good hints out there, but let's get into where the really the the rubber hits the road. A lot of people say, well, you need to, to learn the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path, which we've gone over on these. So if you go to the centeredpath.org and you look up the download section you can find this two page cheat sheet which will give you all of these and we're going through them on video piece by piece by piece now hopefully this is working out because i have another thing rendering on my computer and it may be loud so i might have to do this one all over again but we'll see what happens um so in the 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 four brahma viharas you heard of brahma okay brahma is a, a god in hinduism and he's got four faces Okay, and the four faces, this is directly taken from that. So Buddhism, remember, didn't like pop out all by itself. It was actually a, a transmogrification, if you will, of Brahmanistic and Hindu type cultural things that the guy, Siddhartha Gautama, already knew. He had been taught the Vedas. He knew about these things and he knew well the teachings of the Brahmins. But what he did is he was seeing that those weren't working for him because there was a lot more um, uh, pomp and circumstance. There was a lot of religious stuff. There was a lot of um, dogmatic things and a lot of sacrifices, which he saw didn't make sense. And he also was really good at, at, at debating many of these guys. And some of them actually ended up converting to his way of life. Buddhism was what we call it these days. So... One of the things he does explain, though, is the four Brahma Viharas. Viharas is like shelters, right? That's like a, a places or, or, or holy areas, I guess you could say, of Vihara. And there's four of them. So the first one is Metta. Okay, you, sometimes you'll see people will write with Metta, which means loving kindness. Okay, it's a really nice thing with just, you're trying to be gentle, loving, and kind. Okay, and this is how you would react to a small child who is lost, for example. Or if you had a, if you found a kitten that was lost outside, you would try to be, and it was it was friendly to you, you would try to be so loving and kind and protect it and help it out, right? These are the kind of the ideas we're trying to think of. The second one is compassion, which is karuna, okay? Compassion is being with the feelings of others, basically, and understanding their feelings. So when they have sadness, we understand that sadness. doesn't mean we have to be sad, too. But we, ha we understand the sadness and we understand where it comes from. And this is the development of wisdom also. The next one is sympathetic joy, which is mudita. And sympathetic joy is like being a good sport. This is a basic, basic of it. So when someone else wins, you're happy for them, even if they win against you. They're very happy because they worked hard on that. And it's one of the things that you can do to develop the way your personality and your mind is to accept compliments and to give compliments very genuinely. And this is a good thing because it, it creates harmony in life, okay? And the fourth one is called equanimity or uh, upeska, okay? Equanimity is seeing all things as equal in the most basic. Now, you can go down the philosophical and historical and traditional rabbit holes on those and go crazy with the definitions, but these are working definitions that we can use today. Now, in our meditation practice, we're always looking at where to start. Now, people have unfortunately gotten stuck in this mindfulness practice, which is fine. That's just samatha. That is just being focused on one thing. Okay, whether it's the breath or a candle or a color or a shiny thing or, a, or whatever, that's fine. Okay, the sound of the wind, no sound. The feeling of your breath, the sound of your breath the rising and falling of your your chest these are all those samatha shamatha things that we can concentrate on that will help us build our practice as a meditator but now we get into vipassana and we're getting into like actually thinking about these things and mulling them over or at least trying to develop them now with some of these or actually with all of these we can in fact 
develop them through the sutras. You know, my favorite one is the the Metta Bhavana and Metta Sutra. You know, is uh, um, I probably have to read it because we have some other translations. You can find it online. It's very easy. But it's it's basically thinking about the most person and beings that you most adore and they're, you're most close to you. And you could say you're most attached to, of course. But we're trying to show them loving kindness. Just they, May they be free from worry. May they be free from sadness. May they be happy. May they be free from affliction, which is like diseases. And may they find it easy to take care of themselves. And then you would go out, the next step on that one would be to think of some people you know that are your friends that you don't really like, you know, adore. You wouldn't like let them stay at your house kind of thing. But you would, you know, have them over for lunch. That's the next group. And the next group after that is people you'd see in the store and in the bank and on the road and people that you recognize and you have interaction with, but not too friendly. I mean, you're just, you're just, you're friendly, but you're not friends with them, if, if it were. And then the next people are people you just, just pass by. Okay. We can think of those very easy. You know, as you're driving, you see people that on the roads. And what happens when you do this meditation is you put those all those beings, those people, animals that you drive by, animals that you walk by, animals that you see in trees or on the ground or whatever, you start seeing them and you're like, wow, yeah, they, they deserve this loving kindness too. And I can give them that loving kindness and it doesn't cost you anything. And what it does is it increases it inside of you. And the last two that you're going to do, actually in this, the traditional ones, is people that you've had trouble with. People you're at odds with, someone you've had an argument with, someone you don't like, someone you that picked on you when you were a kid, someone that um, is an enemy, okay? And then all beings in the universe, no matter what they are, all beings, whether they're from the sky or from the ground or from the water, whether they're living or long or short or, or tall or, or flat or round or whatever they are, coming into birth, leaving birth, leaving life, you know, whatever they are, they, they ghosts or whatever it is, you can go through those and kind of think of those and develop this sense of kindness, this loving kindness. And that's the process of doing that, that meditation. Now I posted this as a meditation for some political people that were really upset about things like when Donald Trump was winning or losing and then Joe Biden, this is all American politicky crap. And whether you voted on them or not, just pick somebody that you really had a problem with and show compassion for them. Wish them happiness because if you wish them happiness and they become more and more happy, they become less and less troublesome and then they become less and less of an enemy. This is over time, of course, right? So that's that's Metta Bhavana. That's the first part. And then there are Metta Vihara Brahma Vihara Metta Sutra, right? This is the loving kindness. The second one is compassion. And compassion is the development of feeling the same or feel, understanding the feelings of others. So when you see a rabbit or some animal that like first freezes and hides from you because it's afraid, right? It's pre-programmed to be afraid of you. And then you get too close, it runs away. We, we want to understand that and we want to have compassion for that by not disturbing them because they're trying to just, what, live life into the next moment comfortably. And as we develop, we start to see that all animals, whether it's a bumblebee or a wasp or a spider or a, a dog, a stray dog, a cat, a, a homeless person, they all have feelings. They all have sensations. And we want to be able to understand those. And this is just one way to think of this, guys. So in your process of meditation of compassion, how can we have compassion for these and understand that they too are suffering? Remember the, the Four Noble Truths we went over before. There is suffering. Suffering has a cause. And that causes, basically you can say it's either attachment or you can go to the three poisons, which is like attachment, um, uh, uh, greed, enmity, and ignorance. You can say those three things, right? And attachment and uh, enmity is anger, basically. And then uh, um, ignorance is just not understanding. So we want to develop. We're trying to develop our minds. We're trying to develop our hearts. We're trying to develop these four things, the compassion, the, the, the loving kindness, right? So if we can do that. Now, if we go through, like I was saying with the with the other ones, I posted this and I, I did another video on it as well, but I posted this on Reddit and Facebook and got blocked from three groups because I, they, they freaked out and they were like, this is Donald Trump's an evil man or, or Joe Biden's an evil man, whatever it was. 
and doesn't deserve this. But th see, that's where the that's where the practice comes into effect. That's where the rubber hits the road, guys. If you can't develop that kind of practice and understanding, at least some calmness, then we need a lot more to practice on. Okay. Third part is sympathetic joy. This is another one that we could do with with those kind of things. So if if you didn't like the president who's in now winning, you can at least congratulate him. That's sympathetic joy. You know, that's being a good sport. You know, hey, good job. Hope you do well. Hope everything goes great for you. You know, someone wins the lottery. Rather than be envious, we're trying to do, get rid of envy, right? We're trying to get rid of jealousy. Be happy for them. You know, good job. You really worked on that. You know, that, that, was, that was really well done. It's hard to do, especially when you're younger, because you're so used to I be mine. And then later on, we can get into things like lifestyle and marriages and things like that. But, you know, it's, it's, it gets harder and harder as we get older, but we should be better and better because we've been working at it for longer, right? Now, the last one is equanimity. Equanimity means levelness, okay? We see all things as equal. We understand that I am just as important or just as valuable as the ant, that the tree and I are interrelated, that we should be the same. This is one way to think of it. Okay, other ways to think of things are like all things. It gets twisted in Buddhism a lot where you have people um, say, well, uh, it's the way it's supposed to be. It's the karma. It is karma because karma, remember, all it needs is action. So yeah, it is, it is a kind of karma. Is it good or bad? It depends on judgment. Now, that's the problem because people say, well, equanimity would say that you have no judgment. That's not true. Okay, what it means is you see things as equal. Now, judgment happens we are a judging being neurology forces us to be that way we have a nervous system that's what it does its job is to judge is this good is this bad do i want it to be close to it or far from it that's basically what it is so that's the four brahma uh, brahma viharas actually and I'm going to be going over more of these a little bit more in depth. And I want to do more on the meditation process because a lot of people I noticed, especially on Facebook and uh, Reddit where I'm on there is Facebook. I have a, a, a couple little things. I just kind of poke around on those and um, uh, Reddit. I kind of look at as I'm sitting still nine is my, my handle, I guess it is. And I did Buddhism and, and uh, Buddhism for beginners and Zen and Zen Buddhism and, uh, uh, mindfulness and a few other groups that I follow and I, I see commonly these questions and so that's what I want to ask because I've been teaching this for so long and because I've been actively teaching meditation and studying the neurology and studying teaching the neurology actually because I teach at the college level for anatomy and physiology and that's what I'm trying to get into and understand better so there's a few things I'm going to get into with the rest of the channel so I hope you guys are doing well don't forget to subscribe below and hit that thumbs up button that's completely free because that helps the algorithm for other people to see this kind of stuff and motivates me to see more it's kind of your way of having sympathetic joy and say hey good job and the other thing is it, there apparently there's a bell somewhere you can click that and it'll tell you when i upload again i'm going to try to upload more often and get some more stuff going on these and we're going to talk about some more controversial things in the future so pay attention to those there are some really fun ones and some really weird ones buddhism is a very weird religion and yes it is a religion in some cases and yes it is a spiritual path and yes it is just the th a thing okay you can call it whatever the hell you want um that depends on how you practice it, which is the beauty of it, right? Anyway, this is Reverend Sean over the Center Path. I hope you guys are well. Be well. Be safe. Be kind. We'll talk to you soon.